Hi everybody, this is Dustin with HD Transmission and Auto Repair. Uh, today we're going to be talking about the pressure manifold switch on a 4L60E transmission uh, and common issues uh, that with the switches and ways to fix it. Thanks. Okay, so here we have our pressure manifold switch out of the 4L60E transmission. Um, this is it's really not much to it. You can see there's some marks here from where the uh, the bolts had tightened down on it, that's normal. Uh, but what you're going to see here is right here, you've got kind of a, it's not completely round. Uh, and that can cause a fluid leak that will cause you to have um, a delayed engagement into a specific gear. So you're going to have to replace these seals. But what, what happens a lot of the time is, and I'll show you this here, uh, this is your seal. And this orange piece right here is the diaphragm. Uh, these diaphragms are supposed to be one piece, this big circle that it's got cut out in it. That's actually not supposed to be like that. That is a fluid leak, uh, and that'll cause a uh, delayed engagement. So when, when you go to put it into drive, the pressure switches, drive or whatever gear, the pressure is pushed into the pressure switch so that it knows what gear you're selecting manually. So what you're going to look for is um, when you take the seal out, let me see if I can get this. So this is taking the seal out. This is supposed to be one piece. This is the diaphragm. It's just an orange circle. Uh, inside of it, this has a piece cut out of it. And that is purely from fluid pressure. So that was cut by transmission fluid pressure. And that is two pieces. It's not supposed to be that way. Okay, so what we're going to do with this pressure switch is... We are going to take this pick here, and I'm going to kind of go around it. I don't know if you guys can see that. I'm going to kind of go around the seal here. Kind of break the seal around the, the edges there. And then we're going to pry it out. Okay. All right, and now we're going to pull the diaphragm out. It just kind of shot out at me. I have no idea where it went. Okay, so underneath the diaphragm here, we have this little piece, and this is what reads pressure. So the diaphragm pushes on this little piece in here. you got to be careful when you take these out because they fall out. Of course, it doesn't want to come out now but they do fall out. Okay, so you're going to do that to all these. You're just going to take the seals out. You're going to break the seal. Here. Okay. And whenever you do a transmission rebuild on these 4L60E transmissions, I really would recommend replacing all these seals, and if you can, the diaphragms because you, you can't really tell just by looking at it whether the diaphragm is cut or not. This one doesn't seem to be cut. I can't quite get it out. There it is. I'm going to kind of just go flying at, at you. So here's the diaphragm. And that one has a tiny little cut in it. So that's it. So you're going to do that for all of these. So we'll go ahead and pull these pressure switch seals out and the diaphragms. Check all the diaphragms. These pressure switches, the, the seals sometimes will stick to the diaphragms. You're going to be careful with that. That one's really rough. That, that seal broke. It's old and brittle. brittle. Brick tool. Oop. All right, so here's that little white piece I was telling you about. It kind of just fell out. So this little white piece here is underneath the diaphragm, and you get you got to make sure that it sits between these three points here, inside. Let's see if we can get you to look at it. Okay, so you've got three points: one there, one there, and one there. And these little they sit in between these little ridges. So we're going to go ahead and flip it over. Stick it back in there. Make sure it's 
in there correctly. Okay, and we're going to pull this diaphragm out. And it kind of just flies out, just like the rest of them. There we go. There's another one. A little white piece. Okay, so that's taking it out. So then we're just going to clean it up with some brake clean. Um, or you can use electrical contact cleaner. Um, I've always used brake clean. I've not had any issues with it. And then I'm going to get some new diaphragms and new seals and put them in here. All right, so back to this uh, 4L60E pressure manifold switch. I got it all cleaned up here. <clears throat> I got all my new seals. And these are the little pieces here that we got to put back in. And uh, they go into would be D3 and D2 because they've got the three prongs that line up underneath the white piece. I kind of twist it with my finger to make sure it goes on correctly. And then the flat pieces came out while I was cleaning it, so they go in uh, R, L, and D4. So you kind of just tuck them in there so that they're centered, like so. They should fall inside of a little, a little ring there. There's like a little groove that catches them. Okay. <clears throat> so the key to getting these diaphragms back in there is you kind of want to squeeze it a little so that it curves. But you got to be careful because if it slips out, it's going to go flying. So we're going we're gonna to stick this, kind of tuck it in there curved and it'll slide in there all nice and easy. Try not to wrinkle it. Now if you have to, you can use a pick here to kind of push it in. And this will be the same thing. Uh, there's a common issue with the pressure switches on the uh, 6T70s, 6045. Uh, the 6T transmissions, the pressure switches go bad and it causes delayed engagement. This guy's going to be a pain. So this would be the same way that you would do those on the TCMs. Then there's a, a like a groove that it falls into. All right, well, that's in there. It's real good. <clears throat> so now, once you get one, once you get one in there, you're just going to push this new seal in on top. It's got a lip that goes in on top of it, inside the groove. I just push the diaphragm in. Kind of just push down on it. Try to get it to. There we go. So it's going to be perfectly round. It's not going to be wrinkly like they were before we replaced them. And you can see the diaphragm in there is not wrinkled. And the seal is actually on top of the diaphragm, and that's kind of what seals the chamber there. So now we're just going to do that for the rest of them. <clears throat> Adjust the camera there. Okay, so we're just going to fold it like so. And stick it in there. I don't see it just went flying, told you got to be careful because they're going to fly everywhere. Kind of 
tuck it in there. You gotta be careful because these things are really brittle. And you could put a little hole in one or crinkle it. And if it's wrinkled or you got a little hole, it's gonna cause a leak and all this work is for nothing. Stick it in, ridge down. I don't know if you guys can see that. Then we're kind of just going to tuck it in like we did the manifold switch diaphragm. Push down on it real good. Get it tucked in where it's supposed to go. And it is perfectly round. We did the other two. Fold it over. That's wonderful. Doesn't help. I <laughs> see it just won't fly. Doesn't help when you have giant fingers like I do. I've got some colossal fingers, you guys. Little hands for little tedious jobs. That's the best thing. I've got big fingers like I do. I don't know how I ever got into doing stuff like this. <clears throat> it's hard to, uh, maneuver if you know what I mean and a lot of you guys that are flat rate working in shops you've always got that friend with really tiny fingers and hands you always call them over when you need something done I always had an apprentice he was always uh, doing me favors all the time trying to get things put into place where they needed to be and reaching up in the engine bays. Sometimes you can twist it. Get it to go in. There we go. <clears throat> For reverse. This is the last one. <clears throat> now, this is kind of a nice thing, you know, if you're trying to diagnose a delayed engagement or something, <clears throat> harsh shift maybe. So what you're going to see on these pressure switches is you're going to have D4, L, D3, reverse, and D2. So that is second gear, third gear, low, which would be first gear. 
uh, fourth gear in reverse. So all of the gears have um, a pressure switch for it so that way the, uh, the uh, TCM can know what gear you're trying to be in. If these have a leak, you know, by, by the seal or the diaphragm is broken, it'll cause a delayed engagement or a harsh shift. So that would be a good way to be, you know, if you've got a, a delayed engagement into first gear, you can pull L out and look at it real quick to see if the diaphragm or if the seal is messed up. <clears throat> but as you saw in the front of the video, uh, some of these seals were kind of, they weren't completely round. And a lot of the time what happens is with heat and over time, the seals warp. So you get a leak and, and it causes all kinds of other issues. So, um... Typically, on the 4L60E transmissions, you're not going to rebuild them like I did, uh, unless you're just replacing the seals, because most uh, rebuild kits come with the seals. Uh, but because these are so cheap, you can buy one for $25. Um, you know, I would always just replace them, but this is kind of a for your information video, so that way you guys can kind of see what you can do to help you diagnose the transmissions and, and you know, what kind of issues you've got with that. <clears throat> also, this can be applied to the the six-speed uh, GM transmission, 6L75, 6L80, 60, 45, 60, uh, 70. I mean, all, all of the GM transmissions, newer GM transmissions, they use a pressure switch style like this, integrated into the TCM. So you can always check the pressure switches, you know, make sure that they're not broken or anything like that. Uh, and in the newer transmissions, they offer Sonax offers a kit to fix them. Um, so that's for your information. Uh, any any other uh, questions or anything? Leave in the comments. Um, <clears throat> if you guys want me to tear apart a transmission that you're not really sure of, then let me know down below, and I'll be sure to try to work on those videos for you. Thanks for watching HD Transmission Auto Repair, and I'll see you next time.